Hello, this is Mark Wildman of Wildman Athletica, and today we are going to talk about the economics of Slam Ball. We released a new Slam Ball program. It is five levels of complexity, five families of movements. That's a total of 25 variations of lifting techniques. And people were commenting that Slam Balls were too expensive to buy and train with. I disagree. And we're going to talk about the math of that. There are five levels of the program. It is recommended to do each level with each weight six times. Six times times five levels gives you 30 total workouts for each weight in the current program. And if you did it twice a week so that it tetris in with all your other types of training, then you would get 15 weeks out of each weight. We recommend that people repeat the program three times through with three different weights. That's kind of how much time you need in order to get really good at it. So in each level of the program, there are three rounds. Three times six workouts per weight is 18, times three weights is 54 total opportunities to learn the specific physical skills. And they stack up in families. So there are five levels of squat technique that gives you 54 times five. That gives you 250 plus 20 is 270 opportunities to get extremely good at improving your squat dynamics. Let's talk about the actual slam ball price. So that whole idea is mathematically designed so that it is impossible for people not to learn better biomechanical movement with these lifts. I consider slam ball to be a fundamental lifting technique because it replicates the type of lifting techniques that people did throughout history. Barbells are a new invention. Barbells kind of started in the mid 1800s with strong men lifting chunks of axle from actual trains. And then they evolved really in the last 100 years, 100 years ago, they were still fixed weight barbells that you would see in old circus posters. And barbells have really evolved in recent memory along with say, NFL football training and everybody in the world doing it. Barbells worked very well with that when people also lived on farms. It used to be that 95% of the American population was rural, so people worked with their hands for a living, and they did the basic lifting techniques every day, all day. Barbell is taught at every CrossFit gym on the planet, and there are a lot of CrossFit gyms. Barbelling is very much well understood. It does not work for everybody because a lot of people don't have the old school basic lifting techniques, lifting intermediate weights for higher numbers of reps. We are designing slam ball to drop into any other type of training. So you could do slam ball twice a week and barbell three days a week, and you could set up an easy split that way, and they would complement each other. Because these weights are intermediate and the time frames are very different, they would not compete on a neurological level with barbell for the most part. In fact, they would drastically improve your barbell lifting for the sheer fact that you would get much, much, much better at your squat technique. The squat technique that we use is like an old stone lifting technique where you hug a round object, you get all the way down as low as possible, ass to grass, and then you stand all the way up. If you hug something like that, there is absolutely no way for your core to fail to fire if you do it as many times as mathematically we have laid out in the program. That will carry over to something like barbell training. Barbell training can be a little bit weird for a lot of people because they don't have this other high rep stuff. They're doing sets of three to five, they're working on pure strength, but if they're doing three sets of three and they're doing it twice a week, they get nine opportunities to learn as opposed to doing squats over here on this side where you're doing it for a minute, you're doing a hug squat, you're pushing at the fast end 24 reps per minute at the beginning, eight reps per minute, but you're still getting, say, we'll call it 10 and 20. 10 times three rounds would be 30 times two days on the week. It would give you 60 opportunities as opposed to nine. Even if you were doing five sets of five over here, that would be giving you 25 reps per day and you would do it twice a week, you would get 50 total reps. The sheer number of opportunities to learn for slam ball is just substantially higher. We are picking three weights because we want people to repeat it that many times, but we would really encourage people to run this program with at least five weights. 
Let's talk about the numbers. Living Fit are the slam balls I use. They are an extremely high quality ball, but they are cheaper than say the standard, which is Rogue. Rogue are awesome pieces of equipment, but they tend to be much more expensive. There's basically no difference between these two things. I worked on a movie at the Warner Brothers gym in London, and they had Rogue slam balls. They are awesome, but they're no different than Living Fit balls. So your average man might start with say 40, 50, and 60. We detailed average starting weights in the PDF for the program, but it would be 100, 130, and 150. That would cost $380. People say that's a lot of money. It is a lot of money. CrossFit costs 200 to $250 a month at every gym I've ever been to. If there is a cheaper CrossFit gym out there, I don't know where it is, and I've gone to CrossFit gyms on like three continents. Barbells are also extremely expensive. So think 45 weeks of training over here, just on a basic level program, but you can use these things absolutely forever, just like you could use barbells. A Rogue Ohio bar, which is a very nice bar, is gonna cost you 370 bucks. A cheap bar from Amazon, detailed down here, is 170 bucks. So I actually bought a cheap bar from Amazon a couple of years ago, it rusted out. So for barbell people, because it is a lifelong pursuit of skill attainment and strength, people tend to want to default to buying better equipment. The difference between a rogue bar and a cheap bar is actually noticeable. Think about your barbell setup. What would you need to train at home? You would need a good bar. It could be $370. A cheaper rogue bar is in the $300 range, I think, if I remember correctly. Rogue plates, just 350 pounds. $800. Most people who get into barbelling are going to need more weight than that for their deadlift. You know, guys will be at the 350 pound range, but if they get really serious about training, they're going to be pushing the 500 pound range. Two 45 pound plates from Amazon is $200. I think the rogue plates were about in that range. And then you would need a half rack for safety. You can barbell straight from the ground, but you already better be really good at barbelling and be really strong to pull it off. You're gonna to have to, you can deadlift from the ground, you could power clean from the ground, but think about trying to set up a, a heavy back squat from the ground. There are ways to do it. There are tipping methods that you can do to do it, but unless you already know that and you're already really strong, you're probably not gonna do that at home if you wanna survive or if you want your house to survive. So a basic setup from Rogue, using even a half rack, not a big awesome monster rack, just a half rack, is $800 to $1,000 plus $800 plus $370. You're pushing $2,000 and we haven't even talked about shipping for that yet. So think about $380 versus $2,000. This one is easy. You can drop these slam balls anywhere. You can leave them in the basement. You can put them in the back of your car. You can use them on the street. You can use them in the yard. They're kind of indestructible. Barbelling takes a very specific location. You would need to be barbelling in a barn or you would need to be barbelling in a basement on a concrete solid pad somewhere. You're certainly not gonna do it on a floor with a basement below it because dropping a bar is how you barbell. You have to have a place where you can drop weights. That's why say Olympic lifting isn't taught in a normal box gym because you have to drop weights to do it. It terrifies everybody. It also tends to destroy the building. Also, commercial gyms tend to cheap out and they buy the solid steel plates instead of the Olympic bouncing bumper plates. They're not much different in price, but they're different enough in price when they're buying in that level of bulk that they get the cheaper stuff. And you can't even really learn to deadlift properly without being able to drop the bar because if you fail, you're going to drop the bar. And if you drop 500 pounds of steel plates on a wood floor, you tend to start destroying buildings pretty quickly. Cheap version of barbelling from Amazon, Amazon bar, 170, a cheap rack, which you probably shouldn't trust, 300 bucks. I would be terrified of that rack. 250 pounds of weight is $609. 45 pound pair is another $200 you're pushing $1,300 without shipping for the cheap, cheap barbell setup. You could try it, I don't know. I mean, it sounds fun, but this seems like a much better idea for the average person. We're gonna fill a hole in your training. Old school lifting techniques at appropriate weights. I recommend that people who've been doing kettlebells a while start more in the 50 pound range, 60 pound range, and 70 pound range. There is a reason for that. 50 pounds is very similar to your 24K kettlebell weight. 24K being 53 pounds, 70 pounds being your 32K. 
That is a super heavy kettlebell. It is not a super heavy slam ball, but they are very different types of lifting techniques. And you could, of course, push heavier than this. There are slam balls that are heavier than this, but they start to get a little bit harder to move around. I consider 100 pounds to be about what you can move around comfortably and which isn't going to destroy wherever you live. So the program that we wrote is designed for that weight range. Rogue slam balls are slightly more expensive. They are kind of like a gold standard, but they're really not that much different from a cheap slam ball. They're probably made in the same factory. I don't know. I don't know if rogue slam balls are actually made in America or not. I know a lot of the iron stuff is, but I don't know about their slam balls. But think you're gonna end up spending a little bit more. For the 40, 50, 60, that would be $380 over here. For the rogues, it would be one, two, four hundred and eighty dollars. So the rogue ones are more expensive. I don't know if you need them or not. I use the Living Fit ones, they're great. You can't hurt them. I don't think you can possibly hurt them. And they move around very well and they store very well and you can put them in the back of your truck and you can do all kinds of fun stuff with them. The main thing that we want people to get out of slam balls is those base lifting techniques. Humans used to lift things like this all the time. If you built a house, you built it out of stone. If you built a wall, you built it out of stone. You had to pick that thing up and move it and carry it. Pick it up, put it on your shoulder, pick it up, carry it in front of you, squat, get things in place, all these other basic human movements that people simply do not do anymore. And these movements are not really taught anymore, but they really, really should be. A hundred years ago, 95% of the population of North America was farmers or rural living people. And they all did these basic movement patterns all the time. If you were to combine the slam ball with the barbell, then it would work really, really well. That's the reason we're using these two things as examples. Barbelling got really popular in America as the development of football became kind of our national pastime and sport. It worked really well because the majority of people were still farmers. So they were still doing this type of lifting technique. So if you were to run five weights over here with living fit and you say started with the 50 and you went to the 90, which would be an awesome range, that would give you 60 weeks of training. It'd be 100 plus 130 plus 150. That is 380, 190 plus 190. Those balance out to 200, that's 400. So that's 380 plus 400 is 780 plus 170 is 880 plus 70 is 950. So, and you could break up that cost over the course of time. You could buy new weight every 15 weeks, which is really every three months plus or so. So you can defer the cost. I am writing the programs that I wish people had written for me. I'm giving people the information that I wish that somebody had given me when I grew up on a farm, on a dirt road in the middle of nowhere. There was no internet. We had one book. I had Bruce Lee's The Art of the Human Body and I would look at Arnold Schwarzenegger's Encyclopedia of Bodybuilding when you went to the library because it was too expensive to buy back then. What we're always trying to do is solve the economic problem for the common man. That's who I am most interested in. I've worked with super rich people all over the world, but I am more concerned with the good economic choice for your average person because that's who I am. That's who I wish had talked to me. People always told me I needed to barbell, but I could never afford to barbell. It was simply beyond me to get this much stuff and to ship it. Paying for shipping alone just made it completely unattainable. I really got better at training and doing things and generally living life when I figured out about kettlebells and clubs. Because they're small, they're portable, they never go bad. You can use them in an infinite number of ways so they meet all the economic criteria of somebody from my economic background. Slam balls do the same thing. A kettlebell, a club, a slam ball, a mace are all things that will last forever and you can keep training with forever. Will you attain the absolute strength of somebody with $10,000 for the barbell gear? No. Does that matter? I don't know. I don't really think it does. I did barbell and all this other stuff as well. I got more out of kettlebells, clubs, and slam balls than I ever got out of barbell. So we're going to try and pass it along to you. We are always trying to make sure that we're making it economically feasible in the most way. The maximum amount of training and knowledge. Design the program in such a way that it is impossible to not learn the desired material. Spread the economic load out over time and make it so that that gear is reusable again on entirely different programs.